Hi, I'm Jaron Kim, and I am in the Social Work and Criminal Justice Program. And I'm going to talk to you today about a study we just finished up with a team of researchers at the University of Minnesota. So I want to thank my collaborators there, uh, Richard Lee, Zhang Zhu, and He Wan Lee. We did a study called Adoptees as Parents, How Korean American Adoptees Talk About Ethnicity, Race, and Adoption, and in particular to their children. So for some context, over the past 64 years, an estimated 200,000 children have been adopted out of South Korea worldwide, and about half of these have been adopted to the United States alone. Most of these were occurring in the 1970s and in the 1980s. And when people think about adoption, they usually think about children. But if, given the 64 years, most Korean adoptees are adults, many are grandparents, and most of the research on adoption tends to focus on adoptive parents and children, but not on the lifespan of an adopted person. So we want to talk about some definitions that we used in our study. Oh, is this going? Oh, here we go. Um, ethnic socialization, and this is really the practice of transmitting a person's ethnic culture to their child. Racial socialization is how parents support a child's racial identity. And adoption socialization is how parents talk about adoption to their child or children. Most Korean adoptees are adopted by white parents, and so we wanted to know how do Korean adoptees think about and practice ethnic, racial, and adoption socialization, as well as thinking about how their own adoptive parents transmitted these socialization practices to them while they were growing up. And there was a previous study on second generation Asian parenting practices that found significant differences between Korean adoptees versus other um, non-adopted Asian Americans. So our sample included 52 Korean adoptees in the United States. They were adopted as young as three and a half months to 10 and a half years. They were, uh, 48 of them were married and you can see the racial breakdowns of their partners. Most had only biological children but some of them did have adopted children as well. And you can see that many of them were highly educated and had high incomes. And our sample was largely from the Midwest, which wasn't surprising given that Minnesota has the highest per capita of Korean adoptees in the United States. We found four main themes that show the way in which these parents moved from reflecting on their own experiences growing up to thinking about becoming a family and then their own active parenting practices. So the beyond the paradox refers to the reflection of their adoption experiences growing up. So the adoptees in this group um, re reflected on how they had limited exposure to Korean culture or people. Many of them said they were assimilated to be white. Some expressed that their adoptive families were in fact even overtly racist against people of color, and others said that their families were colorblind and did not see them as being Asian. And so this one father, for example, said the only resemblance of Korean culture was a jar of kimchi in the refrigerator, but that growing up, he didn't even know that it was in there. Um, in the other quote, this mother said, to be honest, I'm 35, and this is the first time I felt comfortable being Korean. The theme of me to, we to me, I'm sorry, it's me to we, is about moving beyond one's own experiences and thinking about what it means to create a family and why they chose to adopt or have biological children of their own. Parents often said that having children offered them a reappraisal of their own experience. As you can see in this first quote, where she says, when you parent as an adoptee, you kind of go through the whole adoption experience again. The third theme was about socialization practices. And this was really about how they actively transmitted Korean culture to their children and how they prepared their children for racism and bias. And for, so for example, one parent said it was really challenging to teach her daughter a culture that she herself had no knowledge of and said that it was like they were learning it together. And promoting multiculturalism, multiculturalism was a common strategy for racial socialization. And one parent said her boys were like tri-flavored ice cream, American because they were born here, Korean because they're a part of her, and Indian because of their dad. The last theme was about parenting as an adoptee, and these parents talked a lot about attachment and genetic connections. Speaking about attachment, this one mother said, when my children are leaving for school, they can't just say bye mom and run out the door. They have to come and give me a hug. I have to hold them in my arms. There's this thing inside me that says I have to remember this goodbye. I don't remember saying goodbye to my Korean mom. This participant was actually nine years old when she was adopted. And then speaking about um, biological connections, this one dad said, um, thinking about his daughter and his wife being able to see his uh, daughter in his wife's grandma said, I'm seeing my birth parents or my past, but I don't recognize it. 
So overall, there was a lot of heterogeneity of experiences and views among the sample. Not all felt strongly about the importance of cultural socialization. Many parents with younger children, in fact, had not even considered the racial socialization part. But those with non-white partners were much more likely to practice ethnic and racial socialization. Many said they were unable to separate the three parts of their identities, that adoption was so interrelated to their being Korean and Asian American, and that they had difficulty negotiating what being Asian or Korean American means, especially since they didn't fit this idea of the stereotype of the tiger parent. 